Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another afternoon read aloud. We are getting close to finishing Charlotte's Web. I was going to sing my read aloud song, but I will do a little puppet show and they will sing the song for you on Dojo so everyone can see them sing the song. I won't sing it. How about that? I just thought of that. So we are about halfway through this chapter and we just heard some really important news. What is wrong with Charlotte? She's dying. She told Wilbur that she is dying and she cannot go back to the barn. Remember, they are at the fair and they are about to leave. And Charlotte has her egg sack and then she's really tired and she just told Wilbur, I'm not going to make it. I'm about to die. And Wilbur freaks out and he woke up Templeton the rat because he needs Templeton's help. He is the only one that can go up and reach the egg sack. So what Wilbur wants to do is at least save Charlotte's babies. So that's where we left off. <clears throat> uh, Charlotte is not dead yet, but she says, I don't have much time left. I can barely move. So we're feeling really bad. Wilbur is panicking and Templeton is going to, well, let's see if Templeton helps Wilbur. And I shared this scene with you from the movie, so you probably already know what happens, because it was the whole chapter, so you saw what happens, but let me read the rest of the chapter, chapter 21, last day, and where we left off, <clears throat> excuse me, is, Wilbur said, she only has a short time to live, she cannot accompany us home because of her condition, and then Templeton yawns, the rat yawned, he straightened his whiskers, then he looked up at the egg sack, so, he said in disgust, it's old Templeton to the rescue again, is it? Templeton do this, Templeton do that, Templeton please run down to the dump and get me a magazine clipping, Templeton please lend me a piece of string so I can spin a web. Oh, hurry, said Wilbur, hurry up, Templeton. But the rat was in no hurry. He began Im imitating Wilbur's voice. So, hurry up, Templeton, is it? He said, ho, ho, and what thanks do I ever get for these services? I would like to know. Never a kind word for old Templeton. Only abuse and wisecracks and side remarks. Never a kind word for a rat. Templeton, said Wilbur in desperation, if you don't stop talking and get busy, all will be lost and I will die of a broken heart. Please climb up. Templeton lay back in the straw. Lazily, he placed his forepaws behind his head and crossed his knees in an attitude of complete relaxation. So while Wilbur is panicking, Templeton's just going, oh, you would like me to help you again. What do I get for it? So Templeton has helped a lot, but he always does it for himself. So he helped with the fair because he went along and he wanted to get all the food there. So he does it for himself, but he is a big help. And Wilbur's freaking out and Templeton says, I don't think so. All right. Die of a broken heart, he mimicked. How touching, my, my. I notice that it's always me you come to when in trouble, but I've never heard of anyone's heart breaking on my account. Oh no, who cares anything about old Templeton? Get up, screamed Wilbur. Stop acting like a spoiled child. Templeton grinned and lay still. Who made the trip after trip to the dump, he asked. Why is it old Templeton? Who saved Charlotte's life by scaring the arable boy away with the rotten goose egg? Bless my soul, I believe it was old Templeton. Who bit your tail and got you back to your feet this morning after you had fainted in front of the crowd? Old Templeton, has it ever occurred to you that I'm sick of running errands and doing favors? What do you think I am anyway, a rat of all work? Wilbur was desperate. The people were coming, and the rat was failing him. Suddenly, he remembered Templeton's fondness for food. There you go, Wilbur. Now you're thinking. Templeton, he said, I'll make you a solemn promise. Get Charlotte's egg sack for me, and from now on, I will let you eat first. When Lurvy gives me my slop, I will let you have your choice of everything in the trough, and I won't touch a thing until you're through. The rat sat up. You mean that? He asked. I promise. I cross my heart. All right. It's a deal. 
said the rat. He walked to the wall and started to climb. His stomach was still swollen from last night's gorge. Groaning and complaining, he pulled himself slowly to the ceiling. He crept along till he reached the egg sack. Charlotte moved aside for, for him. She was dying, but she still had the strength enough to move a little. Then Templeton bared his long, ugly teeth and began snipping the threads that fastened the sack to the ceiling. Wilbur watched from below. And here's a picture. And there's all Templeton. So how did Wilbur get him to go and um, help? He offered Templeton the first dibs on all the food in his trough. Before Wilbur eats, Wilbur is going to let the rat eat whatever he wants. So that's a pretty good deal. And Templeton immediately changed and he said, oh, do you mean it? All right, I'll help. So Templeton, again, is being a big help, but he's always doing it for himself. He has selfish reasons. All right, almost done with the chapter. Use extreme care, he said. I don't want a single one of those eggs harmed. Fifth box fix in my mouth, complained the rat. It isn't worth the caramel candy. So he's got it in his mouth and he's complaining. But Templeton worked away at a job and managed to cut the sack adrift and carry it to the ground where he dropped it in front of Wilbur. Wilbur heaved a great sigh of relief. Thank you, Templeton, he said. I will never forget this as long as I live. Neither will I, said the rat, picking his teeth. I feel as though I've eaten a spool of thread. Well, home we go. Templeton crept into the crate and buried himself in the straw. He got out of sight just in time. Lurvy and John Arable and Mr. Zuckerman came along at that moment, followed by Mrs. Arable and Mrs. Zuckerman and Avery and Fern. Wilbur had already decided how he would carry the egg sack. There was only one way possible. He carefully took the little bundle in his mouth and held it there on the top of his tongue. He remembered what Charlotte had told him, that the sack was waterproof and strong. It felt funny on his tongue and made him drool a bit. And of course he couldn't say anything, but as he was being shoved into the crate, he looked up at Charlotte and gave her a wink. He knew he was saying goodbye in the only way he could, and she knew her children were safe. Goodbye she whispered then she summoned all her strength and waved one of her front legs at him she never moved again next day as the ferris wheel was being taken apart and the racehorses were being loaded into vans and the entertainers were packing up their belongings and driving away in their trailers charlotte died the fairgrounds were soon deserted the sheds and buildings were empty and forlorn the infield was littered with bottles and trash Nobody of the hundreds of people that had visited the fair knew that a gray spider had played the most important part of all. No one was with her when she died. Wow, what a really sad end to that chapter. So it was kind of funny with Templeton and fighting with Wilbur. And then at the very end, super sad. And I feel bad for Charlotte because she never got any of the credit. She was the one that thought of this great idea. She was the one that did the miracle. She wrote on the web. It was all her, and no one ever knew it. They all think Wilbur's a miracle pig, but it was really the gray spider. And it was sad that she said, it said no one was with her when she died. So she was all alone, and she gave Wilbur one last wave, and Wilbur gave Charlotte a wink. And Charlotte knew the eggs were in Wilbur's mouth, and she felt that her babies were safe because Wilbur has the egg sack now and they're going back to the barn. So what a sad chapter that was. Um, but some of the best stories and, and um, poems and what have you are always a little sad sometimes. So um, think about it. Think about what might happen next that Wilbur has the egg sack. And there's not much left. So think about, make a prediction. How, what do you think's going to happen with the babies? There's 514 of them. That's a lot of babies. So I'm thinking about that. And talk with your family about this chapter if you want. I look forward, forward to seeing you all soon. Talk to you soon.